so for quite some time we were off uh, in between but we are joining again and uh, today as you see the caption our being must move eternally through time uh, along with it there are some few more lines which have been taken from book 2 canto 6 and uh, today's topic is a really beautiful one in the sense that uh, we usually do not know much about this phenomenon which is called death uh, but Sri Aurobindo has cast uh, so much light on it for us to know the whole thing very clearly and uh, let us first uh, read out the passage a few lines then we'll dwell upon it our being must move eternally through time death helps us not vain is the hope to seize a secret will compels us to endure our life's repose is in the infinite it cannot end its end is life supreme death is a passage not the goal of our work some ancient deep impulsion labors on our souls are dragged <clears throat> as with a hidden leash carried from birth to birth from world to world our acts prolong after the body's fall. The old perpetual journey without pause. No silent peak is found where time can rest. So this whole passage is a beautiful one. You see, our souls, which are portions of the Supreme Divine Consciousness. These souls are cast in this terrestrial field of evolution and we have to keep moving forward to evolve ourselves. Although we do not know anything about the evolution of consciousness because we Normally, mentally, what we know, uh, it is about uh, biological evolution, which is propounded by Darwin and his followers. But if we go to the roots of it, the Indian thought, we find it totally different, where Behind all this, the spirit, which is the source of everything, what we call, whether we call it divine, whether we call it God, it doesn't matter. But it is one spirit, one force, which is the source of everything. So, <clears throat> all the souls, which are portion of the divine only, are cast in this terrestrial field of evolution to move forward and what we perceive it to be death what we understand by death that we do not exist when we die it is not truly so because with the death that is it is only a cessation of the physical being in fact in our whole being, what when we say that I am, this I am myself, the whole being is constituted with so many elements. In fact, uh, if we uh, take it to be uh, precise, 
the outer personality is formed with mind the vital and the physical these are the sheets so mind we know all of us know about mind through which the thinking the cognition comes then vital is what the seat of all the emotions likes dislikes preferences fear anxiety lust jealousy envy greed attachment anxiety all that stuff belongs to vital but it in its true uh, spirit it is the vital energy which is called the prana shakti that is vital then finally in the frontal personality the third one is the physical body so this these three are the frontal personality but behind this frontal personality who works remaining from behind it is the soul or that portion of the divine which is a representative in each one of us human being so <clears throat> as one dies the physical sheath only crumbles or collapses not the other parts of the being that is your mind your vital remains as it is only the physical sheath dissolves then afterwards then afterwards what happens immediately after death that is leaving the phys physical sheath it moves on through different worlds that first the vital it goes to vital worlds leaving all unregenerated parts which are not spruced up or which are not uh, brought to perfection to the extent possible all those unregenerated parts are dissolved in the vital then the being moves on to the next level that is the mental there also it takes a little bit of rest sort of rest and that too only the mind if the mind is sufficiently developed if it is not then it will touch the mental world and move on to the next uh, final resting place that is called the psychic world where finally the being assimilates means takes into account all the experiences through which he or she has gone in the last birth and out of that only the divine elements divine portions are kept aside and preserved around the soul and which birth after birth when preserved that way as such gradually it becomes what the psychic being or in assam is we call it chaitya chaitya hatta so you see when we talk about death it is only the physical sheet that goes or dwindles or collapses not the other one so <clears throat> in that sense it is it does not really put the physical death does not really put a full stop to our journey so it is a perpetual journey so there is no halt because there is a definite goal to be achieved when we come to this world so the task or the mission we might call it the mission for which we are on earth for which we are sent down to earth 
is to perfect ourselves from our animal past which we always carry because we have evolved right from uh, your most basic elements even from water that's why we see the parable of avatars it's called the dashavatar and each avatar represents a stage in terrestrial evolution through which the avatar takes the humanity to the next rung of consciousness so uh, what we see there's a definite purpose definite aim for all of us for taking birth and death is not as such a cessation of the whole journey it is a perpetual journey <clears throat> and all along there is a divine will in the depths of our being which is we know by now which is called the soul and the part which we just talked about that the evolutionary part in which around the soul all these divine elements through different bars we acquire and preserve rather that the soul preserves it eventually becomes a full entity which is governed only by the divine now here what happens normally for a man when we are in the terrestrial field that is on earth we are in the midst of lower nature so if uh, without any recourse we fall into the trap of lower nature and we are bound to do mistakes and for all those because we are steeped in ignorance we are steeped in uh, misdeeds and as a result we suffer and finally we take raise what we call death and we think that death is the ultimate and after that there is nothing and it is the only birth one takes up it is believed to be so but it is not it is a perpetual journey and when one dies one goes through all these planes uh, of uh, i mean uh, those worlds which i have just spoken of that is vital world then mental world and then the psychic world in which one assimilates all the experiences through which one has gone through in the last birth and out of that acquires and preserves the essence of the divine which is added to the psychic entity for further pro progression in future lives and even in that uh, world itself psychic world itself what happens it even decides that where one should take birth in which atmosphere a conducive atmosphere is uh, chosen by the soul because the experiences which he needs which his soul needs rather will be decided by the soul and for that to happen the soul will precisely take birth in a particular fam in a particular place in a particular family so that all the helping environment or uh, whatever the all the members of the family the friends all around become helping elements in his getting that precise experience for which he yearns so it is a continual journey 
through which one moves from birth to birth. So it is not a, a see a, with one with cessation of one physical body. It doesn't mean that it is the end or it is the full stop. So it keeps on moving. Then Sri Aurobindo says that is the passage, not the goal of our work. Some ancient deep impulsion labors on. Our souls are dragged as with a hidden leash, carried from birth to birth, from world to world. Our acts prolong after the body's fall. The old perpetual journey without pause. No silent peak is found where time can rest. So that is not really the end of our life. We do not have one life to live only, as it is believed normally. There are so many several lives across which our souls journey, gathering experiences, good, bad, bitter, treacherous, so many varied experiences one acquires. And finally, after leaving the physical sheath, goes through all those passages. That is the vital passage, vital world. The unregenerated parts dissolve, are dissolved there. And only the perfected ones are, will be carried along with the soul. Likewise, in the mental world also, if it is uh, the mental development is considerable, then it will be kept along. Then it will move on to the next stage, that is the psychic world. And there it will assimilate everything for further progress. So, <clears throat> what we understand by all this, that a soul moves on like that, gathering experience after experience, growing towards a full uh, embodied divinity. That is the goal here. And that is a passage only from one life to another. And in this whole process, our souls are charged with this mission of divinity. That is why he says, our souls are dragged as with a hidden leash. We might not be knowing who is leading us from behind, but in spite of all our suffering, in spite of uh, all the problems and difficulties that beset our life, all the suffering, all the grief, we still move on. How? It is only because the Divine gives the strength. And how does He give the strength? Through the soul. And all the powers when one takes up the path of yoga especially culminating in the final journey that is the integral path then help is bound to come but just before that the earth is a preparation, ground of preparation through which we'll have to prepare ourselves like the toddlers who go to nursery, isn't it? Where one gets the basic training and then only afterwards 
he or she is comfortable enough to take up other higher studies. So, this whole world and all the incidents in our life through which we go in life, all these are part of the process through which we gather experiences in life and out of all these we or rather the soul which is the divine portion the divine representative portion of the divine keeps it preserve it very carefully and gradually it turns out to be the psychic being of course it takes a lot of time probably i was telling uh, one of my friends the other day that uh, mother, what mother uh, told in this respect she says that uh, even if one uh, is very very sincere one pointed in his or her uh, mission towards achieving this target of, I mean, uh, realizing the psychic, it will take at least 30 years. But that should not deter us from going ahead because that is the only thing for which we have come down on earth, whether we know it or not. And even if some of us we do not know eventually the time will come because it is inevitable in the course of the evolutionary journey of ours that divine brings us on the verge of that stage wherein or it it might you might call it a threshold through which he will take us up to his hands. He becomes us. This is a very beautiful passage you all might be knowing. Uh, that uh, beautiful uh, Savitri book 3, Canto 4. Uh, the Adoration of the Divine Mother. Where Sri Aurobindo uh, beautifully writes uh, that... Um, uh, just a moment, I'll just go through it. It's a beautiful passage. Anyway, forget about it. Uh, basically, it is that uh, he calls uh, the divine, or the, rather the divine mother, uh, always becomes us to her bosom, and we, on our part, steeped in ignorance trying to fulfill our desires only in our life, which eventually uh, bring us to suffering only. Because whatever joy we yearn for, whatever uh, delight we seek for, everything is transient in nature. Nothing is permanent. Until and unless, our whole being is divinized and that can be done only when one becomes a total instrument of the Divine Mother. 
that is in our whole being what we just uh, discussed about that is our mind our vital and even the physical body all these have to be transformed with har power which hitherto was not present in the terrestrial atmosphere and it is they sri aurobindo and the mother divine who in fact it is it is their mission to take two physical bodies just like you and me to come down here and bring that power which was not present in the atmosphere terrestrial atmosphere which sri aurobindo calls the supramental force and it is that highest force only the advent of which our lower nature constituting our mind our vital and physical can be transformed not changed we cannot use this word change transform means root out right from the neither words where it was lying that is why as we discussed earlier also you'll find that uh, the traditional systems of yoga each one had its own aspect and one can develop those powers to carry on in life as smoothly as possible but that cannot ultimately change the human nature which is like a tail of a dog the more you try to straighten it up the more it will get back to its original position curling back why because our nature as it is are steep in this lower phenomenon which are connected to the neither realms so until and unless our we are being worked out by higher power which as we know now by the supramental it cannot do anything at all because if i try to do something with some divine power but not the highest power of which we spoke about then what will happen okay i i can keep on moving then after leaving this body physical body when i come back again all those natures which troubled me the moment i take a physical body again all those natures will be rushing back to me because those do not go away they are in their own uh, worlds as we said and the moment we take birth physical birth means the with the formation of the body all those lower natures will be coming down and take possession of me and i'll again start from where i left so our nature doesn't transform it is only through the process of integral yoga the integral path through which it can be done so <clears throat> so coming back to this um so all these <clears throat> uh we discussed about that is uh, our task uh that is why we are here on earth is only to progress to perfect ourselves to the extent possible but not with our mental uh, caricature mental gymnastics other you can say uh, but then with the highest power now which is available to the advent of sri aurobindo and the mother and if we can if we 
consciously participate in the process and let them work on our being in all the domains of our being that is mind vital and physical then we can our nature can change gradually to the divine nature which is the ultimate aim of establishing a divine life on earth so now what we see death is only a passage through which we like we change clothes and take new clothes wear new clothes death means leaving the physical sheath and taking a new sheath after a certain period come back and continue with our journey perpetual journey which doesn't end until and unless we become ourselves divine so that's it see the profundity of uh, sri arbindo and the mother and the absolute help that is being extended to the humanity of course it might take a lot of time for the human race to uh understand a little bit and uh, uh open themselves to the higher power which is trying to help and uplift uh, the humanity but then at least to start with a few of us who have been called and chosen to collaborate in the in the process it is a mammoth work and all inclusive and the sooner we start the work with sincerity with absolute sincerity and we all know even the sincerity live alone being absolute even the sincerity is not a thing that it comes immediately but when one truly yearns towards that end when one opens up to mother's power working then it is inevitable to happen what we have seen in our daily life till now and it is for all of us to see to realize and it is not confined to one single or a few single person whoever is open and are willing to participate in this uh, process in this divine play all will be helped not only of their personal individual self even their families their friends to the extent it is required of course and all will be laid towards the cherished goal for uh, cherished goal for which we are here but don't know mentally but our soul or the psychic knows very well why we are here so that's it for the day thank you jai ma if you have anything to ask you can go ahead please